Hi there, my name is Claire Schroeder from Making Moves Net and I'm going to be talking today about the power of inner confidence. Yesterday, I, like many people, were glued to the Wimbledon and watched Laura Robson win. It's the 30th June today, so history is going to change. We don't know what's going to, happening, going to happen with Laura's other games. But I watched Laura Robson pick herself up from losing against her opponent to finally winning. How did she do it? Laura was six games to one down in the first set. In the second set, we could see she was struggling. She managed to bring herself up so that she wasn't losing any of her own serve games, but she was struggling and we saw her each time going off to the side, she was trying to, to find it and then she was still making mistakes. She went back again, finding something within herself. And then gradually, Laura began to find her game again. Laura began to play really, really well. And by the third set, Laura had won. It was touch and go many times through that, through that match. At any time her opponent, opponent could have got back at her. But Laura had found an inner strength in her, what I'm going to call inner confidence. Except, is it really confidence? Many of the clients that I work with come to me and tell me that they lack confidence. And yet within sometimes an hour or half an hour of coming into one of my workshops or groups, they are expressing themselves with amazing confidence. So it isn't that they lack confidence and it isn't that Laura in her game yesterday lacked confidence because she knew that she could play tennis very well. And you probably know that you can, whatever it is, stand up in front of the group or, you know, express yourself powerfully in certain situations but there's, there's those situations that you find hard that you're not confident. What it's about is that you cannot connect to your confidence. You lose touch with it and you go into this other place. This other place that Laura was in yesterday where she was struggling, where she was playing badly, where she was not on top of her game. So how did she shift it? Well, this is my guess at how she did it. And this is how I help other people to get back in touch with that powerful inner confidence. That confidence that is always there. We just need to reach out and get ourselves in with it. So the first thing I think that Laura did is that she started to breathe. And she started to breathe deeply. Because when you start getting nervous, your breath starts coming up into the chest. And your shoulders probably start going up here. And if you watch a tennis player who's losing their confidence, you can see straight away in their body language, it is tiny little things. That there's something the way they're holding, there's something where they're throwing the ball, there's something, we can see it in their body language. And this is the same with us. People can see that our body language is not communicating in that same confidence. These are tiny, tiny, subtle little things. So you can start getting back that true confidence by just breathing. And breathing deeply, right down into the belly. Don't worry about pausing. If you're in the middle of feeling uncomfortable, lacking in confidence and you're delivering a speech, it's fine to breathe deeply, pause and give your audience an opportunity to take breath because you're probably at the point you've lost confidence rattling away. 
So slow right down. Breathe deeply. There's a place in your body that is very powerful and it's called the solar plexus. It's just over your stomach and you may not be able to see that but it's just down there underneath, just over your stomach, your solar plexus, a very powerful place. Or you might want to focus into your belly and feel into your belly. Different people find one or the other powerful. In the Indian chakra system, the solar plexus is the I am place, it's the place of power and that's why I talk about the solar plexus. It's being a powerful place. Connect in with that place. You might also, if you're not sitting down, you might want to just get your feet really underneath you. And notice that I started off by having my feet slightly displaced. You probably notice that I'm looking a little bit different now. I have my feet on the ground. And the next thing that's really important to do is, is if you do these things, you're already beginning to bring yourself present. So all those voices that say, you're not doing very well, look at you, they're all judging you, look at him, he doesn't think you're doing very well, da 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 da. Believe me, even to this day, you know, and my confidence levels have transformed, but even to this day, I can be in those experiences. So that's why I bring myself back to that place. When you're fully present, those voices dissolve. It's like you're rebooting the computer. Reboot the computer, let go of those voices, look at the person you're speaking to, smile, connect with them, connect with one person who's enjoying what you're saying. And then focus on what, it, what is it that you want to communicate? What is it that you want to give? What is your gift in this moment? Focus on that. And that's what I think Laura did yesterday. She thought about winning the game. She thought about, I'm going to play some good tennis. I'm just going to play some good tennis. Or, I don't know what tennis players say, but it probably isn't that at all. But for you and me, it's probably about, what is the gift that I want to give? And actually we saw Laura at the end of the game, look how she related to the fans. She went on signing their tennis balls and signing their, maybe she just focused on that moment. That first moment when she'd, when she'd won, when she was communicating and she's, she was able to give that to the fans. And this is what you can do too. Practice this today. Try out these few things that I've suggested. Maybe one day, if you're in London, come along to one of my workshops. You can do it.